When one girl's just not enough for you, you gotta go for four. Hey, what is up, my fellow optimists? This is what the word. Hey, what is up, my fellow optimists? This is your captain speaking. And welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, seriously, welcome. I am so, so, so happy to have you here. Please, please, please pull up a chair or a hammock. And hey, bring a friend next time. Seriously though, like bring a friend. Introduce somebody to this, please. And if this is not your first time here, welcome back. I love you so, so much. You are my best friend. And I gotta ask you, do you have any horror stories of dating in high school, middle school, grade school? Any at all? Any nightmarish things you want to reveal to your favorite gamer on the internet? Let me know down in that stuff. Today, we are going to be playing a game that is in no way, shape, or form new. It is, however, mostly new to me. I originally was introduced to this game way, way, way back when I was still doing the podcast, in the early, early days of the podcast when we were also doing game reviews. I played about half an hour and thought to myself, why the hell am I playing a stupid, dumb anime dating simulator? This is not for me. And I never looked at it again. And over the years, I have been informed that there is in fact much, much more to this game than I originally thought, but really have no idea what is in store for me. So I am going on faith that this is not just a stupid anime dating simulator game. Not that there's anything wrong with anime dating simulator games. They just aren't my thing. And I am trusting you people that this is in fact a horror game and there will be scary things ah! that happen in it. If you haven't guessed by now what game we are going to be embarking upon today, we are going to be playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Finally doing it. I'm gonna see what the hype's all about. The Literature Club is full of cute girls. Will you write the way into their heart? I don't know, man. <laughs> it, just, it just looks like it's a dating game, but it's fine. It's fine. I am trusting you people. You know what, we're gonna jump out. We're gonna jump head first into this. Try to get the girl. Let's just do it, man. Let's get into this. Let's play Doki Doki Literature Club. God help me. That might be the most adorable song I've ever heard in my life. Just rock out to this song. They're all adorable. I am going, you know what? I'm all in, I'm all in. I'm 100% in, let's do it. New game. My name, my name is Becky. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because we've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. That's mean. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <sighs> I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Uh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Becky. It is mean, Becky. Stop. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. <laughs> Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with the other students making their daily commute. By the way, Becky, 
Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Ah, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. What is a neat? You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right, what is a neat? Not in education, employment, or training. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! <laughs> she's so cute. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Because she's cute. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I am the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori, yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Ah, uh, me. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, Today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, uh, Becky, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. <laughs> All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. It really is. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry? Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You could just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back to the other girls. Sorry. You can just ignore her if she gets moody. Anyway, that, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that all right? Is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Becky. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Becky. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. 
Hey, I made them, I'll get them. Sorry, I get a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know, just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sle sneaking glances in my direction. You like what you see? Ah! I really feel like this is illegal right now. And I pretend they're at least in college. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why? Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Uh, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcakes tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I, I guess. It does, it really does. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that That's not insulted. Yuri looks away. Aw, Yuri, it's okay. You did impress me. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. I like her. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Uh, I was afraid of this question. <laughs> Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet and Sayori seemed really happy here, so that's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major, for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. Clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile, but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Becky, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga, I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. She does have a fairly sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. Hang on, let me just, maybe. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But. 
You know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you? I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Monica, you do not share people's personal poetry without their permission. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Maybe Sayori and Monica can have their own little anime dating club. Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Oh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your reader exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yori? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, Yuri doesn't look comfortable with that. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Becky? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Look at all the personality. We've got Huffy over here. We've got Sailor Moon. We've got <laughs> I'm really trying to, like, just look at their faces. Deep, intriguing, sensitive, complex one here. And then we've just got perky beyond all <laughs> belief over there. Hold on, there's still one problem. Huh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, uh... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... Uh, I'm sorry, I thought... Humph! Becky! Y you all- I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if, ri if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. <laughs> hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official! Welcome to the Literature Club! <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Becky, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yep! Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Becky! Since since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed f after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Will I really be happy spending every day of my life after school with four adorable anime girls who all want me? What's a girl to do? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. But which one? All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight.
time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. All right, so I gotta make, I gotta make girls happy. Tragedy. I didn't mean to actually pick that. I was just seeing if maybe something happened. I feel if I just pick like all kinds of like cutesy words, that would be Natsuki. I'm not sure what's going on with Sayori. Shame, shame, empty. Oh, intellectual, that might grab Yuri's attention. Oh, it sure did. She liked that. Boop. <laughs> Contamination. Yep, Yuri likes that too. Depression? Who's got depression? Oh, Sayori's got depression. Yay! Uncontrollable. Yep, Yuri likes that one. Comfort, vertigo, fireflies, rain. Let's, I like fireflies. Sayori is liking all of these. Wrath. <laughs> Yuri likes wrath. I'm not sure I'm feeling that one. Anger? Oh, Natsuki likes anger. Horror, Yuri. Yuri was reading the horror book. Scars. Oh, damn, Sayori. I'm not sure I'm liking that. Doki Doki. I I can't wait to see this mishmash nonsense of a of a poem. Papa, who's got daddy issues? <laughs> Natsuki. Unending. There we go. Back to Yuri. Meager. Effulgent. William the bloody up in here. Misery. Oh. Sayori, I feel like you should talk to somebody about your extreme depression. Sadness? Damn, entropy. There we go. Graveyard. I'm trying to impress Yuri. Hi again, Becky. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Becky. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. How do you even do this? this. I feel like they would break their arms. Just broke my shoulders. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Oh, she called you out. Mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Becky always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change it because these are not my pronouns. Becky always gives it her best as long as she's having fun. She helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sari, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Becky can become good friends too. Uh, um, yeah. She's shy. Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. Dude, she's embarrassed. Stop it. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. What do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. Guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, you don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I, I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. That doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. Looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. 
but that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, this is not what I meant. I, I mean, I just... I happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. Something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go, because apparently I'm oblivious. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kinda, kinda dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Becky? Uh, no, it's not that. I, I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I, I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's, I really don't think you need to worry. Just means you're passionate about reading. Least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, that's, well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. Not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Uh, sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Uh, I do? I don't, I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. Ooh, sparks be flying! It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Ah, to turn the page. Oh, sorry. Think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over her to her side as she catches it under 
under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Y you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Becky, that's, it's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, chill. Holy cow. This girl has some self-esteem issues. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I, I didn't really know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I meant more that it's kind of cute. Ah, oh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I, okay, everyone. Oh, Yuri was so like ready to start this relationship. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not e have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right, guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm, in that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, Feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right, I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yep, my relaxation ends. Can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, I mean, we're building a relationship with Yuri, right? Feel like this is who we've chosen. Yuri seems the most experienced. <laughs> so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Ah, what was that? Huh? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's, I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Oh, wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. <laughs> well, I know that. I, I just meant, um, Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words of the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering's completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Uh, of course that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even the simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. Might take you some time, but it, it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself or me or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh... Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. Ah, uh, well, that's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. 
Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Becky. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem was only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. Hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Uh-huh. It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know. I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Becky. Uh, me too. Who should I show my poem to next? Let's get Monica out of the way. She's kind of... Dull. Hi, Becky. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. First, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Becky. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that will all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. Great job, Becky. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. This is true. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? It's it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. 
Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. No, thank you. Let's go Natsuki. She's angry. Becky, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer, biatch. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? You're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. <laughs> Painful to think about? <laughs> Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can... <clears throat> Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. I want to find a hidden meaning in this. But yeah, told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. Helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. She's got a little fang. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. All right, Sayori, let's go. This is a good poem, Becky. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course, it's not that good. Am I the kind of girl who'd be writing poems in her spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the classroom. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Becky. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. Not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined, knowing how much this means to her and all. Obviously, that's the reason. It has nothing to do with this. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Yeah, I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out as nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. I don't know, Sayori's got a secret hidden pain. I think she's depressed. Really? Yeah, especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. She's not as happy as she seems. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I'll look forward to it. Ooh, I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. <sighs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. 
As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute? Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, uh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Uh, well, I, I do have have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it, which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Becky did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <sighs> And Becky liked my poem too, you know. She even told me she was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh huh? That's, that's not what... Uh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Becky appreciates my advice more than she appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know she didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? These girls be fighting? over me. No, if I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <gasps> oh, ho, ho, ho. the burn is why I like this girl. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Becky started showing up. <laughs> Holy bananas. This girl fight is about to get vicious. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's just a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Becky, she's, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Becky. Wait. Also, I'm not saying I care, but it would be interesting to see if the character model had in fact changed between the first and second days in the club. Just saying, for science. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Becky? Uh, well, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course that's going to be... I think I am going to agree with Yuri. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri, huh? you're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I, I see. I, I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Uh, but Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. Well, she's young. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Um. Sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to- You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki! She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? This girl got some problems in her brain. 
You handled as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Becky, you're too kind. I really am, I'm too kind. I'm thankful to have you as a part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing, uh, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I, I <laughs> about her boobs. I would never do anything so shameful. So, uh, what thing did Natsuki say? Uh, um, oh, never mind that. I'm gonna go make some tea. You're in high school. Could you not have made them in college? So at the very least, I didn't feel like this whole process was illegal. Good idea. Make it enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Becky, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Becky, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. Truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. This man, he a player. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Huh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Becky, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's, <laughs> every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone's nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! <laughs> yeah, let's do this. I think we're gonna go ahead and save it right there and then we're going to quit for today you know what i'm invested i am invested in this story i am invested to see where this goes there's obviously some turmoil that these girls are experiencing they've got some dark and twisty things going on with them beneath the surface i'm sure of that i'm here for it could you please have made them be in college so that was our first installment of Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm, I'm liking it. There's definitely something going on there and I'm, I'm here for it. I keep saying I'm here for it because I'm here for it. If you liked this, any part of this, let me know down in the stuff. There'll be more to react to as the story progresses. I'm excited to see where it goes. So if you like this, please let me know. Leave me a like. Hit that subscribe button. It helps me, it doesn't hurt you, and it helps this channel grow, which is, you know, kind of the goal. If you haven't already, please join the subreddit where you can share memes, fan art, uh, videos, jokes, whatever it is that you wanna share, funny, scary, or otherwise, and we'll all enjoy them and react to them. It'll be super great. And please consider following me on all the social media so we can interact in other places on the interwebs. If there's anything else you guys want to see me play or do or try or whatever, let me know down in the stuff. Please remember that you are so special and important and awesome and talented and funny and loved and you make the world and my life better. So please stick around. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and supporting and I will see you next time. Bye. Everything changes. We got it this time.